Texas. I'm joined by Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett of Texas. Congresswoman, welcome. Um, I read your tweet uh, before coming into the segment. Um, like you, I'm tired of the BS. But how do we respond now? How do we deal with the, this feeling when we hear our citizens in states like yours say that they want to move and they don't feel safe anymore? Yeah, um, Michael, you know, it's, it's interesting because I obviously am very well aware of um, your history. And, you know, I want to go back to kind of normal political kind of discourse, right, where you can talk to someone from across the aisle and say, hey, listen, this is a problem. And it not be this politicized thing mm -hmm. where it's a fight about we're trying to take people's freedom, we're trying to take their constitutional rights. You know, we're not trying to do that. What I'm trying to do is make sure that children and parents go home uh, as a family unit, the same way that they left when they went to the outlet mall to shop. That's all that we're trying to do. And the idea that we can't engage in real conversations to solve real problems, you know, the idea that, unfortunately, uh, so many of my Republican colleagues at this point in time seemingly want to pretend that they're pastors and only offer prayers instead of offering policy. Because last time I, I checked, I was elected to offer good policy solutions, um, not to be someone's spiritual guider. That <laughs> you strike a real a real nerve there on the policy front because that's that's where the work is required right now. And when you're looking at uh, it certainly what's been happening in your state in recent years, some of the deadliest mass shootings have occurred there. Yet uh, those Texas lawmakers, those Republican lawmakers in particular, continue to weaken the state's gun safety laws. Um, how do you organize around that? How do you begin to germinate the kind of energy to change that, that policy approach in, Tex in states like Texas? I think it's about education, right? We've got to get the people on our side. We've got to tell people the reason that you're experiencing this is because of what that person did, right? Like we've got to connect the dots. And I think that that's what we felt, what we failed to do very uh, accurately is continually connect the dots. But you got to understand in a state like Texas, we don't have any campaign finance limits. So I can talk as, as much as I want to, or Democrats can talk as much as they want to. But when literally someone can drop millions of dollars into a race and kind of drown out the conversation, that's usually what we endure. We endure kind of this onslaught of money to where the conversation is drowned out. Most people don't realize that in the state of Texas, last session when I was there in the state house, there was a bill that was passed about discriminating against companies that are pro-gun. We're not allowed to do that in the state of Texas. Don't discriminate against pro-gun uh, companies. But DEI in this state is dead, according to our governor. This is what we do. We don't value diversity, but we absolutely value guns. We don't value lives, but we absolutely value guns. We don't value the right for a woman to live, but we absolutely value guns. It's about the values. And we need to say that we demand better values of the elected officials in this state. We demand values that align with who we are as Texans, because unfortunately, we get a bad rap. We look like we're the crazies of the country. But to be perfectly honest, the people of Texas are way better than what we see our elected officials doing. So I have a, a quick two-parter for you before we let you go. And, and the first part is, are there any Republicans uh, that, that you could reach out to, to to create that coalition that you, we were both talking about a moment ago? And just how powerful are not just the gun lobby, but the industry as a whole um, in sort of blocking the kinds of reform and, and instilling that fear in those elected officials that they can't buck that system? Yeah, so I would say that there may be a chance in the U.S. House, may be a chance, right? It just depends on how hard McCarthy pushes on some of these folk, right? And honestly, I will tell you that there definitely is um, at least one Republican freshman in the U.S. House that 
I feel like is a very sensible person, right? This person um, is a former U.S. Navy SEAL. And I, I think that he understands this and he definitely has a heart when it comes to the mental health aspect of things. And so I think that he's somebody that I could talk to. But it's tough when you're a freshman and it's, a, it's tough when you've got a leader like McCarthy. So I don't know. I think that there are people that are willing to, but definitely they don't know where that leads them, leaves them kind of going forward. As it relates to the industry itself, um, the industry is powerful. It's obviously a lot more powerful than, than the voters for so many of these Republican districts. The NRA will make sure that they put money behind candidates that they feel like are the ones that are going to do their bidding. Um, and honestly, they have been very effective. That is why this country is falling apart. That is why people are scared. That is why parents are nervous every time they drop a child off. It's because this industry has advocated and put the money behind politicians. Mm -hmm. You guys have spent a lot of time talking about Clarence Thomas being bought off. Well, let me tell you, there's plenty of members of the U.S. House um, and the U.S. Senate that have been bought off by these industries. The difference is we've got transparency and we can see the numbers. Democratic Representative Jasmine Crockett of Texas, thank you very much.